Hello, welcome to Jigasa IAS. I am Kanishk Shekhar, and uh, here we are trying to see all the major legislations that were passed by the government uh, in the last one and a half years. And uh, we have started with the UAPA, that is Unlawful Activities Prevention and Amendment Act 2019. This act was formed; it was enacted in 1967. But uh, last year there was an amendment to this uh, law. and it was very widely discussed the home minister made a passionate speech in the parliament and the opposition leaders made equally passionate speech opposing the law so it was in news and now why we are seeing it now because uh, last week uh, few student activists have been booked under this law by the government so it has again been a very hot topic that is and if it becomes a hot topic it becomes important for us so let us try to analyze what are the amendments that have been brought through this act it will designate individuals as terrorists if he or she is promoting preparing or is engaged in an act of terror now this is an uh, amendment and why we are seeing it as an amendment because earlier there was no law that could designate individuals as terrorists organizations can be terror organizations not individuals but uh, the government said and when the home minister made this speech in the parliament he said that it is becoming very tough for us over a period of time it has been observed that one terrorist organization if if an organization is labeled as a terrorist organization and steps are taken to prevent them from engaging into acts of terror a particular terrorist organization for example maybe indian mujahideen if government takes uh, action against them or government freezes their account whatever precautionary steps that were to, that have to be taken it metamorphs into some other organization it changes uh, it acquires some other name so it is becoming very tough for the law agencies to track these uh, new formed organization so instead of tagging organization let us uh, go after the individual that was the rationale given by the home minister second the bill empowers the inspector rank officer to carry out investigation now before prior to this amendment only an acp or a ds additional commissioner or a deputy superintendent of the nia could investigate offenses under the uapa so there are not many people of the rank of acp or ds in the nia so it has it has delegated down to the level of inspector even an inspector rank officer can go for the uh, this uh, in investigation into the terror charges and just one point about nia it was it is the premier agency of the investigating agency national investigating agency it was formed after the 2611 attack third point the bill empowers the officer of nia of the rank of inspector while investigating cases of terrorism to require a sanction from the dgp of nia now this is one change earlier the investigating officer needed approval from dgp of the state for example if there is a uh, nia suspects that a particular individual who is engaged into act of terror is hiding in some state maybe gujarat maybe andhra pradesh then the nia needs to uh, before the amendment nia was to seek orders or to seek approval from the dgp of the particular state now this provision has been done away with because uh, bureaucracy has its own pace of doing things by the time approval was sought the alleged terrorist could have escaped or he could have you know gone in went underground so the purpose was defeated so the idea here is to cut the red tapism and make uh, it a bit more streamlined that it's known uh, it's not uh, not to go into all these uh, uh, delaying process just the an approval from the nia and it would serve the purpose so these are the three amendments that are mainly we have to consider now there are certain uh, reasons for uh, these amendments the first reason is that india has to as a responsible nation as a signatory to various conventions and treaties india must abide by these treaties and uh, often it was felt that the india has demanded to designate certain individuals as terrorists example you can see on your screen molana masood azhar and hafiz said now india tried its level best to do it in uh, via unsc the united nations security council and the p5 countries especially china 
always used to ask that do you have laws in your country where an individual can be designated a terrorist the answer was no so the world was asking india that you want us to do something which you yourself are not doing and china you know often opposed india's move against molana masood azhar couple of time it did finally last year china agreed and molana masood azhar is a un designated terrorist now so how can we ask world to do something which we ourselves are not willing to do so that called for a check into this law and required amendment was done another point that is very important is the rise of lone wolf attacks now who is a lone wolf lone wolf is an individual who is not affiliated to any terror organization he is a freelancer so a terrorist freelancer who is not officially affiliated to maybe any famous or infamous terror organization he has been radicalized on his own he has developed his hatred because of something some reasons that uh, have influenced him or her now when he engages into acts of terror what is the mechanism to stop him it is said that india faces low risk from lone wolf attack because unlike usa or europe india has india does not have such uh, gun friendly laws so a lone wolf cannot do much damage but then arms can be procured illegally as well and it would be very tough we will be the first one to blame the government if a lone wolf acts on his own and does the damage so it's better to be ahead of perpetrators uh, policies should not always be reactive they must be proactive as well so before uh, like uh, we created nia after 26 11 we felt that cbi is overburdened so we need another premier agencies to look into terrorist acts that is nia it could have been done before who knows 26 11 might not have occurred if nia was doing it before looking into the matter before so why to wait for a lone wolf attack and inflict the damage why not uh, change our laws so that such things do not happen so in in terms of lone wolf maybe the current uh, threat is less but of course the potential is always there better to amend the act now there are certain issues certain concerns with this law that will it be misused like uh, pota or tada now these two are often termed as draconian acts and now they have been scrapped so mere eight months after pota came seven states where pota was in force over 940 people were arrested same goes for tada number of people arrested under tada had exceeded 76000 and 25% of these cases were dropped by the police without any charges being framed now this is a travesty of justice 35% of the cases were brought to trial of which 95% resulted in acquittals so on what basis these people were picked when 35% of them were acquitted so this shows that the lacuna in the laws so there is a strong apprehension that maybe uapa will be misused like pota or tada maybe central government will engage in political vendetta maybe they will target a certain section of people maybe minorities we don't know that remains to be seen but these issues are not illegitimate they are very much legitimate because we have had cases and whenever such thing happens and also about the federal structure because uh, nia and a uh, uh, central agency just going into a state now law and order and police is a state subject so without informing the dgp uh, the nia would be barging into the state and conducting raids so that that again is not the form of federal structure which our constitution makes us uh, envisioned but yeah currently these issues are very much uh, valid so what is the remedy any individual who has been designated as a terrorist by the central government is there any remedy the first there is a three layered remedy the first one is that he can challenge it he can uh, challenge it if uh, mr x has been labeled terrorist by under uapa law then he will file a petition with the central government now students who are appearing for the mains exam need to analyze this a bit you are appealing against the government which itself has framed you as a terrorist so will this work or not is uh, very questionable but then there is a second step as well that center rejects the petition then within 30 days another petition can be filed and when the another petition will be filed a review committee which will be chaired by a sitting or a retired high court judge and there will be three more members 
which means total there will be four members they will hear it so here a judicial process will start and even if the review committee disagrees uh, that you are not a terrorist uh, and they, they agree with what the central government says then the last resort is the supreme court of india there can be a case in the supreme court the individual can approach the supreme court so we see a three layered uh, remedy available here so if the law does not work we are not sure whether this law will work or not there have been few arrests now whether they are terrorist at the central government believes only time can tell us so if it is being misused these are the steps that are on your screen which suggest us that there can always there is a remedial procedure available now let us try to conclude is there is something called social contract theory which we study in political science it means me and you as citizens have submitted some of our liberty to the government in lieu of protection to be provided by the government liberty is never absolute all the rights in part 3 of the indian constitution the fundamental rights are not absolute they all are qualified so we have voluntarily surrendered some of our liberty some of our rights so that we are protected by the center by the government so that is what uh, the social contract theory says and uapa is totally in accordance with social contract theory next comes the article 21 the right to life and liberty no one can deprive of you you of your life and liberty except for a due process of law is what the indian constitution says so due process of law means that it has been enacted by the legislature of course this law was passed by the indian parliament now supreme court time and again has gone for judicial review so judicial review is possible procedure established by law and due process of law so if supreme court goes uh, decides to scrutinize whether this law is just or not whether this law will uphold the right yes or not then of course there can be a trial on this and if found uh, unjust supreme court can scrap it back like the case of njac njac was also established uh, after due process a uh, pro sorry procedure established by law but then uh, the supreme court thought otherwise and supreme court scrapped ngac so if this law proves to be uh, menace to the society then of course there can be a judicial review and it can be scrapped and if there is a misuse then the misuse must be quickly checked and there must be a time bound trial of the law and guilty should be punished if they are using it for political vendetta or targeting certain section without any solid reason lastly india is uh, one of the top 10 destinations for terrorists uh, it is on the target of terrorist terrorist call india as the unfinished chapter so india cannot afford to be ha have uh, cannot afford a lackluster approach our laws must be quick uh, time bound and stringent and it must have the capacity to deter the perpetrators so this law is need of the hour whether this law will be misused or not that remains to be seen there are apprehensions those apprehensions are valid but let us not act on apprehension let us uh, see how it unfolds so because there are remedies available to this if it is uh, not uh, used well and not in the right sense the purpose for which it is it is being brought so there is a question for all those uh, appearing for the mains preparing for the main exam are fundamental mm -hmm. principles of fair procedure being compromised under uapa suggest how there can be a balance between individual liberty and strict anti terror laws so please uh, see this uh, video and you will get your answer try to write a balanced answer whatever uh, doubts you have you can uh, raise in the comment section we'll be meeting again all the very best to all of you take good care stay safe